Joe Gula. Hi, everybody. Hi. I want to make this speech pretty quick and uh, so that you guys can vet me because I'll tell you I'm getting addicted to it. Poor Carrillo said a debate. I have been vetted by every tea party throughout the state of New Jersey. A lot of them, almost the majority. I look forward to it because people ask questions and if you don't have anything to hide, it's great to ask your questions. Um, my name is Joseph Rulo, Joseph Rudy Rulo. Clark over in uh, Citizens for Freedom gave me that one. He said, Rudy, Rudy. Um, <laughs> Rudy is pretty symbolic, if anybody remembers the movie. Yes. And, um, you know, the reason I'm running is because, the sole reason I'm running, and I think that seeing what the IRS is playing with the game now, is to make this country, once again, an equal playing field, and fair, for all. But to add to that, to take social injustices and inequities, and to address them. This country was built upon principles that people are supposed to be equal, that there's supposed to be fair play, there's supposed to be constitutions being uh, followed, and it, it's not being done. The platform of my campaign, and it's, it's a lot of common sense, but we all know that rhinos, and <coughs> that's another word Clark taught me, and I'm glad I'm not called a rhino, by the way, out of all the words, that's probably one of the words I would never want to be called. We have a problem in this country, folks. I'm a business person. I not only own a solar energy company, I don't use the subsidies, I'm more on the educational side. I teach at the college. Um, I only get paid when I teach. I created the whole program for free, and the class is barely run. This economy is run to the ground. I have a landscaping company that illegal aliens have run rampant and destroyed the sol the, not only the solar industry, but the landscaping industry. A big part of my campaign is to revitalize small business. You're not going to hear any politician talk about 90% of the employees that are under 100 is small business. This whole country is in deadlock by insurance, by employee comp, by all these hurdles. It's almost impossible to be a business person in this country because people do it the wrong way from other countries. You know, how do you compete against a company that has people that are off the books, people that aren't on insurance, people that can use a hospital, bankrupt the hospital, and don't, aren't able to have a judgment put on it. What you do is you try, and you figure out ways to get around it, like I do a lot of jobs myself, and rather than hiring somebody, because if you use comp, you get in a lot of trouble. So I have payroll, but I can't afford it, I'm off the payroll, then I have to do it. It's not fair. So I want to revitalize small business because I understand it. And I can immediately bring jobs to this state quickly by understanding the needs of small businesses. That's one. Two, this state failed under both Democrats and Republicans to bring manufacturing, technology, and research to this state. They haven't done it for years. We are in a stagnant spiral. They're not looking at energy production. We could be doing coal in this country. We could be doing coal like you couldn't even imagine in this state. We could be silicon mining. We could be doing gas. You name it. And you know what? They're trying to launch certain things, but the EPA's got all these strict standards. I got, a, I got an idea. You're never going to get rid of the EPA. Let everybody lie to you and say they're going to do it. What you can do is you can transition them into a business-friendly entity. That's what we need to do. It's not like the UN, where I want to get rid of it completely. Okay, we need to get rid of the UN completely because the UN should have been gone after World War II when it was supposed to communicate between the communists and the United States, remember? And that's what it was supposed to be. But I want to be clear, the EPA is not going to go away. So as a senator, I'm going to say to them, listen, you're in 2012, my friends. We need the Keystone Pipeline immediately. And we're not going to send it overseas because you know what? We're going to refine right here in the United States. That's what we need to do. Now, I've been in Middlesex for days, and they have a plant with Hess oil. Believe it or not, those people there, they want work over there. They want that, that power plant to start refining again. So there is a lot of areas that we can do this. When you bring <coughs> manufacturing technology and research and revitalize small business, you add another thing to it. Here's jobs, the supply. 
Here's the supply of our treasury, the cash that's in there from hardworking taxpayer dollars. As you deport illegal aliens, what's going to happen? Your job supply goes up, and so does the amount of money in our treasury, and where our hospitals don't get bankrupted. Folks, we all agree with one thing here. We need to deport these people now. Yeah. Yes. The Constitution is being strengthened. The Constitution is being thumbed up at, ignored. These people, you think they're going to change? When they come here, they break the law, and when they come here, they continue to break the law. The police officers who we entrust and protect us, and we love them, they can't even do anything because there's no standard protocol. How do I know this? Because I asked about 100 of them. And they all say, you guess this is good as mine. You pull them over, what do we do? There's nothing they can do. They see them as a hassle. So, Joe Rulo has a couple of good ideas. Number one is we incorporate an image program. Which, by the way, if you're a federal contractor, you cannot get any business unless you're approved by this image program. This image program will make sure that every employee that works for you is illegal free. Guess what's going to happen when that happens? You're going to start to even though oh, we can't get any work here. Okay? Two, check cashing places. Did you guys know that Walgreens, uh, let, me, let me rephrase, Walmart, Stop and Shop, because a Western Union, Right? We listen to this. Yeah, and all the check cashers. <laughs> well, no, we're not going to be surprised. You're going to be surprised. And check cashing places. Do you know they wire transfer? Not only are they wire transferring money to Mexico, but it's money laundered money. It's not even tax paid. Now, if you're a cash business, the IRS, well, if you're the Tea Party, the IRS is going to come in after you. Because they think we're making all this money here, right? Selling cookies or whatever it is. These guys have got to be kidding me, okay? <laughs> These illegal aliens, part of my plan, right? Revitalize small businesses, manufacturing, technology, research, deporting illegal aliens. Yes, deport them now. Because it's like, when you say this, people go, how are we going to do that? It's real simple, okay? Well, no, you have to shut them out. You have to go to check cashing places. And you raid them all. And if any of them are wire transferring money to other countries, they need to stop and cease it. It's called a cease and desist order. And I will do that as a senator. The other thing that I think is a great idea is Ron Paul, as well as the nation, is really going towards let's start auditing the countries that we don't need troops. And we're going to start bringing them back. I say don't fire them. I say we build bases on the borders. That's what we want border bases. And that will be training grounds, and you watch and see how many illegal aliens are going to try to come over that border when they see a big base. And the bottom line is that's a good way to show our troops that we care and love them. Now, can you think of any better of a stimulus program? You know, how do you save money? You know, how are you going to pay for this? It's the cost of delay, folks. This is costing this country. You know, Obama is focusing on, you know, he wants health care. He wants a mandate so they bankrupts. It, this health care that he has is going to be taxing transactions. It's going to be taxing real estate sales. It's going to bankrupt people like me who pay as I go, and I have a choice to do that. If I want to do that, that's fine. They're, that's what he's trying to do. Instead, he doesn't focus on illegal aliens, which are destroying this country. And illegal aliens don't have to worry about anything because they don't own a home, so they don't get any judgments. They don't own a car outright, so they don't get any judgments. So the bottom line is if you combine business revitalization of the small business sector, manufacturing, technology, and research. Do something that is unprecedented in this state. Have common sense. Guess what starts to happen? <coughs> People will need a home to live because they have a job. That's why all of your homes around you are all foreclosed and short sales, because people don't have a job. So here's Joe Rulo who gets in hopefully the first two or three years and becomes an irritant if I'm still alive within two years with all the stuff that I want to do. Somebody doesn't try to kill me. And that's the truth. Yeah. Okay? I will make sure that I'm a diplomat. I am a darn good salesperson. And I will go to other states and I will steal all their manufacturing, all their research, and all their technology because we're a competitive state. We're a great state. And I will work with Christy, right hand, shoulder, man to man, and make sure that we get this manufacturing into the state because we are going to fall as a state. I'm telling you, I have two companies, and they're not moving, and neither is any other company. People are just, they have a lot of pride. They don't want to admit it. This country, people are depressed, 
they've been beaten down and they're tired of it. Well, to add to it, people start buying homes, that's great. What's the next? Investors will start to buy homes, yes, because people's credit, most of them are shot and they can't outright buy a home. So now an investor is going to buy a lot of homes so that they can place job filled people. So now you have new homes being bought, jobless people. Guess what's going to happen next? Home values aren't going to be short sales and foreclosures anymore. Their properties are actually going to rise. Now, this sounds like common sense, right? It's a lot of work. And this state, under this current administration, and the last, and the one before that, has failed in manufacturing. They have. It's diminished over the last 20 years. Research and technology. We've lost. I have a company called SMA Technology. They just brought something like, I think it's 200,000 jobs into Colorado. If I was a senator or governor, I could have cut the deal. But you know what? I'm not able to do that. As a senator, I can. I can, and you know what else? I want to be very objective. I want to be impartial. I will absolutely quit my solar energy company the day that I am sworn into office because there's no way that I could be impartial. The other thing too, and I want to let everyone know, is that I've been endorsed by the U.S. term limitations for only signing something for two, two terms. I say you, I don't want two terms, I will serve one. In six years, if I can't pass a budget, okay, I will try to go after the amendment that allows a senator to be an elected official and put them back as an appointed position. You have to be kidding me. Does everyone here realize that a senator used to be in an appointed position that survived the governor two extra years. That's why it's six. I believe that the position is a paycheck, that it's a pawn position, and it's a lot of these senators are not doing what they're supposed to do. In fact, Senator Menendez used his power to try to knock out a nominee into the courts because that person had a lot to do with that probe that he had going after him. Does anybody realize he uses senatorial power to do that? They traced it to that. And the big thing is, is that his whole case was wrapped around a prosecutor who was his friend for 30 days and tainted the whole entire case. That case should have been done by somebody who was not his friend. I will reopen, if I run, I will reopen that case in any way that I can exercise my right to do. Because let me tell you something, if we're going to be Menendez, there's only one way to do it. You have to rip him out by his hair because he's planted there. He's not going to be like Joe Rulo and serve one term. There's a reason why I only want to serve one term. I'm a human being. I'm not God Almighty and I'm not Jesus Christ. And I am definitely not someone who's going to be able to resist temptation. And after six years, after six years, I believe that's a perfect amount of time that I need to be able to pass a budget. If I have to, I will get up on the Capitol stairs and I will get into a refrigerator box and I will go on a starvation diet. That will make them pass that budget. Three consecutive years. What do these people do? And you know what's funny? You have to do something that extreme to get these people to move. I have been involved in this county with several victories. A lot of victories. I have forgotten how it feels to lose. That's why I don't want to lose the chicken. I don't. And I think that we have a serious problem with credibility, career politicians, we have corruption that's rampant. I was the first person to have a press conference against Ritako when nobody wanted to talk about it. Everybody was like, wow, who knows Ritako? Who has a job with Ritako? What mayor? What council? What this person? I had a press conference and I said, I want the Ritako sign down, school board either move out of the way or help. And I said that, I said he needs to be fired. Three days later, not only was he arrested, but that sign was down. And you know what? I'm proud. You go to Rulo, R-U-L-L-O-F-O-R, Senate.com. Go to my media page, and you'll see I had a press conference in 2010. And I think it's pretty impressive that I got up as a GOP operative who worked side by side with the Republican Party and didn't call anybody and say, hey, by the way, you know, who does this guy know? He knows everybody. And I threw him under the bus because he's corrupt. And let me tell you what I'm for. I'm for any corrupt politician undercover. 
not off with your head, because that's what they'll all say. We're all crazy Tea Party members, and he wants to get them trees and off with your head. No. Congress has the ability under the Constitution to change the laws of treason, the punishment. What I'm suggesting, and what I would push for as a senator, is to make any corruption, any corruption, by any public official, any corruption of stealing, immediate treason, and redefine the laws as life in prison, no parole, put them on an island. You know that island that we think that our left sock is? You know, ever lose your left socks? Put them on an island like that, then we don't even have to deal with them ever again. It's not too far from reality to do something like this. You gotta realize something. We elect these people year after year, and we have hope. Not the kind of hope that Obama gave us, but we have genuine hope. And that word hope should go away, because we should never give up in our government. But until we enforce it. And I will tell you, I believe that I could get the Congress to pass this bill. I, there's no doubt in my mind. And you know what? You'll see corruption starts to diminish if all of a sudden you have that situation coming.